Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I thought, uh, since I had a few minutes to spare here, that we'd just sit and talk a little bit. Uh, yesterday, the family and I went fishing. That was really enjoyable. We didn't catch anything, but we had family time, so that's what matters to me. Um, it was a great day. A little windy, but overall, it was a great day. And um, got to spend time outdoors, near the water, and in the woods, and all the good stuff there. Don't mind me, I'm a little messed today. I have been working. I'm mentioning that. I hope you all have been working because things are not looking good out there, are they? Uh, I have decided that it was, I think, let me see, Thursday night. Wait, Wednesday. Let me see here. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. No, Thursday, Friday. Friday yeah, it was Thursday night. I had some um, vegetable scraps in the freezer and chicken uh, carcasses. And I told my husband I'm going to break out the cooker and make some more chicken stock because, well, I had it. And B, I like to cook mine for three days so that it really breaks down and gets all of the collagens and all the goodies really break down and get into the broth. So, I cooked it for three days, we went fishing yesterday, came home, and I strained it, then I put it in the refrigerator after I strained it to let the fat develop and come up to the top, and then this morning, I skimmed the fat off the top as much as I could, and been in the process of pressure canning it today, so I'm going to have... 19 quarts, I believe, or not quarts, I'm sorry, 19 pipe, pints, my words are all over the place today, uh, 19 pints that I'll have pressure canned to shelf stable, then I think I had about 4 cups left over, so I just went ahead and froze that, and we can use that first, um, I just, you know, I've been really watching what's going on, and, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to come on here and rant or anything else. I'm just trying to prepare people because things are getting really, really iffy out there. Uh, the price of gas alone. Mm. I think it was three seventy nine here in Ohio. I'm sure it's different fluctuates in different areas, but it was three seventy nine. Like 18 months ago, we were paying $1.58. People were going to have to start staying home more. Because, uh, you're not going to be able to afford to go whatever, go do whatever you want at the, at the, anytime you want. Or, you know, I mean, we're pushing $4 a gallon here. I mean, that's just crazy. Um, sorry, I keep looking over there, I'm watching my canner, uh, wait, making sure it stays stable, I have about eight more minutes to go turn that, that off, um, but, yeah, and I've just been really working on things because, um, I was watching one of my homestead channels that I follow, and, uh, she was talking about just for the price of feed alone for her chickens 
has went up so much that she did what she called a scary mouth today. And she sells her eggs. And she said, folks, it's not going to be $3 a dozen, $5 a dozen, even $6 a dozen. Just the price of feed going into her chickens will take her dozen eggs to $11.50 a dozen. And that's a break-even cost. That's not counting gas, which she's also pushing $4 a gallon to go somewhere and sell the eggs or give the eggs or whatever she's doing. It's not counting, you know, her pine shavings or her time, any of that. That's just the feed cost alone for you to get an organic chicken eggs. A dozen of them. And she's we well, excuse me, she's reworking her things and trying to figure out how to bring that cost down because she doesn't want to charge that much for eggs. But just for like I said, just for the cost of her feed that feeds her chickens. To break even would be eleven fifty a dozen. That is like, well, I don't have chickens. No place to have chickens. I would love to have chickens. But I'm not going to pay eleven fifty dollars for a dozen eggs. I'm not going to pay $6 for a dozen eggs. Just not going to do it. Um, well, I would pay $6 an egg if I could, eggs if I couldn't get them. I'm not, I can say that, but I would not pay eleven fifty. Wouldn't. So are you guys thinking about these things? How are you gonna get eggs if you're not able to raise chickens where you live? Are you gonna pay the eleven fifty or the ten dollars or whatever it is to get your eggs? Now will grocery stores go up that high? I can't say they will, I can't say they won't, I have no idea. I'm assuming they won't go that high because the eggs in the store are not organically grown. Um, I mean, you can get organically grown or organic eggs, but will they go that high? I'm not sure because of mass production and all that. But it's still going to go up. Everything's going up. Are you stocking? Now, I've mentioned this several times in my channel in this history. I haven't been really pushing you about it or um, being aggressive. Just mentioning here and there to stay, that are you staying busy? Are you dehydrating things? Are you canning things? Are you stocking your pantry shelves? Um, do you have powdered eggs on hand? Do you have powdered milk on hand? I had a family member that actually, she said, I never even heard of powdered eggs. And, you know, a lot of people haven't. Um, but it's just like I said, you know, you're in Paisley Girls Life in the Garden. I like to plant those little seeds. Because there are people that don't know about things like that. So, you know, do you have that on stock in case you can't get a chicken egg? Or a fresh chicken egg, I should say. Um, milk, you know. Powdered milk is probably not going to be a favorite for us to drink. The powdered milk will be good for our meals. Having uh Dry, freeze-dried powdered eggs that are scrambled or whatever for kinds of bakings or making scrambled eggs when you don't have eggs. And then they mentioned something about, well, how are you going to cook this if, you know, say something else happens. Not saying it is. Say something else happens, there's no electricity to cook on. and You, you know, don't have gas or whatever, stoves. Um... 
there are other alternatives. First, learn how to cook on a fire. Have a good or several good cast iron pans. And if you can't do that, they have camp stoves. They have survival stoves. They have, you know, things that you can cook on using propane. Are you stocked up on those things? Are you stocked up on propane to cook on those stoves? Are you, you know, it, there's lots of things out there that can give you alternatives. Now, I'm not on here to scare anyone or get anyone anxiety going or anything like that. I'm just asking you. Another thing too, you know, powdered milk. There's coffee drinkers out there. Um, I don't pay for Starbucks. Mm-mm, no. Way too much. But, are you willing to give up your coffee? I mean, coffee's not really a staple or a need. It's something you enjoy. And if something happens that you're down and depressed and you need something that makes you bring lifts up your spirits and that would be a good cup of coffee how's your stockpile in that do you know how to make coffee without having coffee do you know how to find it do you know what you're looking for do you know how to uh, roast it? Do you know how to grind it down? Do you know how to make it without the convenience of an espresso shop or um, being able to just open the can and make you some coffee? Are you prepared for that? I can give you a hint. Dandelion root. Look for it. Look it up. It might not be the coffee that you necessarily are used to drinking or want to drink. But in a scenario that you don't have any and it would just really be nice to have one. Dandelion root will work really well. Do your research. There's so many things that is provided to us on the earth that you can use to replace other things. How's your flour? Do you have wheat berries? Do you have a stockpile of flour? Do you have um, food grade buckets to store it in to keep it good for long term? Do you have stockpile of sugar? I believe that the um, back in the Great Depression when people were being rationed food Or you only had so much that you could use of sugar a week? One cup. Is one cup of sugar going to be enough to sustain you and your family? Back to the coffee. Do you drink sugar in your coffee? Do you bake? You got to think about these things. And like I said, this is not a scare tactic. And I know that I probably sound crazy, look crazy, whatever. But don't come knocking on my door. When you and your family don't have anything. Because you've been told. I have raised my children, my adult children to understand this. Are they doing it? I I don't know. Have I mentioned it to them? Have I talked to them about it? Yes. Are they going to listen? I hope so. Because, you know, I have to think about my family here. And I can't stockpile for everyone. There's no way. A, I don't have a big enough place for it. B, 
if I've taught you how to do it, then you need to do it. It's sad. I think that they're... Well, I can't say... I can't say that. I know that our daughter has dabbled a little bit into it. Um, I know that our boys are prepared for, you know, like hunting and fishing and things like that. But are they are they prepared for other things? I don't know. Just like I don't know if you all out there are. I pray that you are. And if you're not, you should have started yesterday. While things are still manageable, I would suggest that you think about picking up a few cans here or there of extra things that you can keep back. Go to Aldi's. You don't have to go and spend a thousand dollars. You don't have to go and spend five hundred dollars. You don't have to go spend even two hundred dollars or a hundred dollars if you don't want. Spend an extra twenty or thirty and get, you know, canned food items that are going to be shelf stable that you can put back for a rainy day. Because if the prices keep going like they are now, it's going to be a lot of rainy days. You know, it, we've seen things going up and going up and going up. And people are trying to tell others to, you know, start, start a garden. Learn how to garden. Learn how to preserve your food. Because I'm not going to be the one that's going to Walmart and fighting for that last bag of flour or that last bag of sugar, I'm just not going to do it. And I would hope that you wouldn't have to either. Not because I'm not saying there's a shortage coming. Even though I've heard things, I just, I'll let you all do your own research. You know that there's a war going on on the other side of the world. Everyone knows about it. Um... And the countries that are involved are very high in um, grain production. They're not number one, but they're very high. Grains are definitely going to go up. Do you know how to make bread? Do you know how to make homemade noodles? Can you make those staples... So that you're able to feed them to your family. A simple pancake. Muffins. You're going to be seeing the prices go up high in them. Are you going to pay $7 for a loaf of bread? Now, I'm not saying that's what the price is going to be. I have no idea. But it's just a general concept. Learn how to make bread. Learn how to make rolls. Learn how to make all those pastry kind of ingredients. Without a box. Without all that stuff. If you had a, if you have a bread maker, great. If you don't, learn how to make it like your granny did. It's not going to come out perfect every time. And it might not taste like the store-bought bread that you're used to. I think it's better. Other people might think that that's not as true. But is it going to feed your family? Absolutely. I just wanted to come on here and talk to you all because, you know, it's really, like I said, it's been weighing on my heart. I have been... Trying to talk to family members. I've tried to, you know. But I'm past the part of talking. I would be glad to help anyone that has a question. Or questions. 
but I'm not going to keep telling everyone, hey, you, you know, are you stocked up on this? Are you doing this? Are you, you know, do you have this in your pantry? Are you prepared for this? I'm not going to do that anymore. But if you have questions, I'll be happy to help you. But you have to want to do it. Not because I've told you so. Not because Joe Smo down the street, one of the farmers, told you so. It's because you want to do it. You are responsible for yourself and your family. What are you going to do about it? You going to prepare now? Are you going to go and fight everyone else for the same products that you need? Are you going to pay what you would normally pay for a dozen eggs to read them four times the amount? Are you going to pay for a bag of flour that's normally ten dollars? You're going to pay twenty-five, twenty-three. How are you going to pay for that? Just think if everything goes up, fifty cents, twenty-five cents. That adds up. If you have a hundred items in your cart, figure out the math, math there. How much that is on your grocery bill. Here's another um, thing that I was reading and researching on. And the farmer was saying, expect your grocery bills. This is going to be a hard one to swallow. This is a farmer. Expect your grocery bills to go up a thousand dollars more a month. Do you got that thousand dollars? Some of you, I'm sure, do. Do you want to spend that thousand dollars? Hmm, I don't think anyone does. Will they have to? Possibly. But either way, are you prepared? I just, um, crazy, you know. I sit and think about my children and their children, my grandchildren. And I hope that everything that I have taught them is setting off alarms left and right and they are doing what they need to do. And I'm hoping that this video will help you learn what you need to do. Like I said, you should have started this yesterday. Day before yesterday. Last week. But you can start now. That's better than nothing. I, uh... Like I said, you know, I've done... I've been doing chicken broth today. And, uh... Dehydrating. I didn't do that today, but I have been just thinking of, you know, we made our list and thinking of things that we feel like we fell a little short on and we've been stocking up on those. Um, I just hope that whoever watches this video realizes that I truly care. And I'm just trying to help you. Some people, you know... Oh, she's crazy. She, she don't know what she's talking about. Have you seen what's going on out there? Have you went and got gas lately? Have you noticed prices in the stores going up just a tad each time you go there? Dollar Tree store is now called a five-quarter store, I guess. It's... Not really, but that's what people are saying because dollar twenty five for the Dollar Tree store that you've been paying a dollar for these items all these years is now dollar twenty five. Do you have rice? Do you have beans? Do you have, you know, people get half cows and quarter cows and whole cows and put them in the freezer? That's wonderful. If you have electricity. So. Do you know how to can that. So that you don't have to have electricity. To keep it safe. 
to eat. And I'm not gonna lie, we have free we have freezer meats. We have, you know, things like that. But if things, you know, get to the point where there's no electricity or whatever. That's not gonna lie. Be the first things we eat. Are you canning it? Do you have a canner? And if you don't have a canner, do you have a big enough heavy bottom salt uh, uh, pot? And do you have jars and do you have lids? Do you have all the things that you need to preserve that meat before it goes back? Do you know how to hunt? Do you know how to skin a deer? Gut a deer. Do you know how to go catch fish? These are survival skills that aren't only for the SHTF scenario. These are things that you can use on a daily basis to feed your family. I hope I didn't bore you all too much. I just wanted to come on here and and share what's been laid heavily on my heart. It's just something that's really been um, weighing very heavy. But yeah, um, I've got half of the chicken stock already out cooling. I'll show you that. Let's turn you around here. Now the lighting isn't great in here, but let's see here. Look at that. So delicious looking. And I know what's all in it. And I also used these Tadler lids that I ordered. And that is actually the first time that I've ever used them. Um, so I'll have to see how they seal. I'm hoping they do because, you know, people who started canning or have been canning for many years saw that last year finding can lids and rings was harsh there wasn't many um, I don't know if that's how it's gonna be this year but I can probably almost guarantee you that the prices are gonna go up a lot of people are gonna be wanting to turn to that so could there be a shortage I don't know possibly I mean, it's not unheard of. We just saw last year. You couldn't find anything. Now, I know that they're on the shelves now. And they are higher priced than what they were before. Are they outrageous yet? Mm, they weren't the last time I checked. But I got the Tadler reusable lids. Um, and little rubber gaskets. Because they're supposed to last as long as you take care of them over and over again. They can last for years. Um, excuse me. <coughs> so this is just a test run on those to see how they hold up. Um, I do have regular canning lids. Wide mouth regular as well. Um, if these don't happen, say I have some fails, uh... I can always reprocess them and use regular lids, but I'm really hoping these work out really well because, A, I waited for them for six months. Because when I ordered them at the beginning of the canning lid shortages, they weren't able to get the materials to make them. I believe they made them up in Michigan. Don't quote me on that. Maybe. I think so. And they didn't have the manpower or the uh, material for production. So it took me six months to get them. And they said it would be sometime in October. Then they postponed it another 30 days. So technically it was six, seven months. And like I said, they're supposed to be, they're food grade. They're supposed to be 
really good and reusable for years to come. And if that's the case, then I'll be really happy because the canning lids are expensive. I mean, they don't seem expensive if you, you know, see them for seven, eight bucks a box. Um, but they are when you can a lot and you only have, I think, 12 in a box. Is 12 things of stock going to last you the year? Won't us. So, yeah, I'm hoping that those turn out. I'll have to let you know. Um, you can also go to my Facebook group. Um, it's Paisley Girls Life in a Garden, just like my YouTube channel. And um, see what we're doing on there. I get on there and put things that I've been doing and other people, you know, can share what they're doing. Um, it's just, it's a new group, so we're just trying to build it up. But, yeah, you'll be able to see if you go to my Facebook page. Like I said, just like the name Paisley, Paisley Girl in Life's Garden. And you'll be able to see uh, the, what I'm canning and dehydrating. We like to do a Sunday update time. And people are more than welcome to comment, you know, things that they've been doing. And you don't have to tell people, this is in my stockpile, and this is, this is, you don't want to do that. But, you know, just generically, what did you do this week to sustain yourselves? Anything from freezers, um, what you stocked in your freezer, um, medicine stuff, clothing canning, dehydrating, fermenting, anything like that, you will you can come on there and, and talk about things that you do because what that does is help others that you might do something that they didn't think of and then that light bulb will be like, I didn't think of that. And then that helps other people too. So yeah, I'll have to let, uh, I'll post it on there tomorrow after I take the rings off and see if there's a good seal I'll let you know on there so go to my Facebook page and um, request to be in it that way you can find out too it's been a quiet day here today and I'm just like I said working on this and relaxing for our Sunday ready for the work week tomorrow but thank you all for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I just, if you could like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos. And if you can, share with your friends and family my channel and help your friends and family learn something new or be able to enjoy watching things that we do. You know that we do all kinds of things here. And, you know, some of our blogs or just family events that we're doing or I might bake something or I'm fermenting or I'm dehydrating or I'm canning or making a good delicious meal you know we don't have a set thing here it's just what we're doing on a daily basis as a family so thank you again for joining us we love you God bless you get busy on your stockpiles and let me know how you're doing have a great week everyone Share, share, share.